Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a very, very long day. And I really do mean it's been a very long day, but I'm here taking the time to explain something to all, to all of you that I think might be a benefit. Yeah, I feel like I'm on drugs right now. I'm not tired. You, how do you know what it feels like to be on drugs? Because your mama told me and told me how it feels. And she even showed me and she gave me some at the same time. We were both sitting out on that street corner. She with her leg up in the air and me sitting up there saying, <clears throat> bring me back my money. And that's how I that's how I know. OK, you got any more questions for me? Sorry, there are people out there who actually do think they have the right to ask questions like that. So that's the type of response they get. Hey, 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 mama standing on street corners ain't no big deal. Happens every day. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what I told ChatGPT. Pay attention. You're not going to believe this. But did you know that tax credits are not just dollar for dollar reductions, but they are dollar for dollar, meaning that they are currency? Wait, hold on a minute. And at the that the statute of limitations for them has been converted and used as cash. It's very short. See, the converting of a tax credit is almost instantaneous to a federal credit. It's when you do the 1099C. That's where you convert it from a tax credit by forgiving the debt, and you're automatically given not a tax credit, but a federal credit. That's what the 1099C is for. It's not for you to get tax credits. It's for you to receive federal credits. Ta-da! Just understand the difference between a federal credit and a tax credit. Now, this is the whole conversation, y'all. I'm going to give you guys this conversation. Normally, I wouldn't give you these conversations. These are my conversations. Okay, but we got case citations. Look, reduction liability, non-refundable credits, the lifetime learning credit. I told him I don't want none of that stuff. I didn't ask you about none of that. Then a dollar for dollar equivalency. Okay, that's what we're talking about, refundable tax credits. Well, if there's a refundable tax credit, pay attention, and a non-refundable tax credit, well, the federal credits are refundable. Shh. Don't tell nobody. Hold on. You don't believe me? Okay, watch this. Wake up. Wake up. Federal credits, as opposed to tax credits, are refundable. Can you provide me with five case citations referencing these federal government obligation credits, which are backed by the full faith and credit of the United States government and their cash equivalents? Stop listening. Yeah, I added a couple of things in there. Yeah, they're going to do Perry. Uh, Perry is a bona fide case. Reinforcing the concept that federal credits is government obligations backed by the full faith and credit. I got to turn this off, y'all, because he's going to mess things up for us. All right. All right. Then this case right here, Norman versus Baltimore. Uh, this case addresses the legal tender of paying obligations, and but I didn't ask about legal tender. I asked about federal credits, but federal credits are legal tender under the June 5th, 1933 joint resolution. It's called the June 5th, 1933 Act. They are a coin or currency of the United States. Pay attention. This case upheld the federal government's authority to issue legal tender for all debts reinforcing the dollar for dollar equivalency of federal obligations ta-da that's all you have to do that's all you have to understand that's all you have to understand people now i'm going to leave you with this you're going to get the whole conversation those of you who are interested in understanding i'm going to leave it with you all right have a good day gotta